Welcome to exercise 5 to create a corridor for the yard. In this exercise you will learn how to create a corridor for the yard using the corridor tools. The first thing that we're going to do is to create a new 2D DGN file uh, to store the corridor in. So we're just going to go to file, new, make sure you've navigated to the data set and in the file name here, we're going to type metric corridor yard. As everybody knows, when you're using MicroStation, we need to attach a seed file to it. <clears throat> so we're going to hit the browse button. And we're going to navigate to the workspace to locate a seed file. So we're going to go to the C drive, program data, Bentley, open rail designer, CE, configuration, organization civil, Civil Standards, Metric, Seed, and pick the Seed 2D Metric Rail Design dot DGN. And just open that file and now save the DGN. Having created the new DGN, we need to attach the terrain model and also the geometry. So we're going to go to the home tab to primary attach tools references. From the reference dialog we're going to go tools attach and here's our geometry. I'm going to hold the control key down and select the terrain. I'm going to attach them both at the same time and just select open. The reference and attachment dialog settings, I'm not changing anything on here, but because I've selected two files to attach, I'll get this dialog box twice. And you'll see the two files in the reference dialog box. So I'm just going to close that and hit fit view. And now I'm going to window in on our geometry. As we all know working with Open Rail Designer, we tend to work in 2D and the Open Rail Designer software creates the 3D model in the background. So I'm just going to open up a view that will have the 3D model in it. So I'm just going to go right click, view control, Two views, plan, stroke, 3D. And there is the 3D model, here is the 2D model. I need to make the terrain active in the 2D model. So I'm just going to select the terrain, wait for the context sensitive toolbar and select to set as active terrain. And then just deselect. And now we're all good to create the corridor. So I'm still working in view number one and again I'm just going to window in onto our geometry. So I'm going to select open rail modeling. Under the create tools for the corridor I'm going to select first of all to open the template library. So I'm just going to hit the create template option and the template library window will open. And from file on the create template window, I'm going to go to open. And I'm going to navigate to our data set. And I'm going to pick the yard ITL. So it's a specific 
template library for this project. And I'm just going to go file and close. Now I'm going to select a new corridor. I'm going to locate the corridor baseline and this is going to be our track main line. The name will be populated here. And I'm going to use the active profile and I'm leaving the feature definition on final. So I'm just going to go right click, accept the name. And there is our corridor boundary created. From the create template drop window, I'm just going to use the alt and down arrow which will take me to the pick template window. And from the pick template window, I'm going to pick from the list here, single track with ballast. And I'm just going to go, okay. I'm going to accept that template. And the end station, or the start station, is going to be Alt, so I'm locking it to the start. And the end station is going to be station 290. I'm just going to enter that. I'll drop interval of 5 meters. And there's no transitions between the drops. And I'll just escape from that. And there you will see, there's your template placed in both the 2D and the 3D view. Having created the first template drop from zero station to station 290, we're going to create a template drop over the area of the yard. So I'm going to go to new template drop. I don't have to go to new corridor because the corridor has already been created. I'm just creating another template drop. Locate our current corridor. And I'm going to hit the browse button and I'm going to pick this particular template here and you'll see it's got a widened area for the ballast to accommodate the siding tracks. So I'm just going to go OK on that, accept it. The start station is station 290. The end station is 910. And the drop interval for this particular template drop is going to be 5 metres. And there you can see the widened section in the area of the siding. We're now going to add our last template drop. And this again is to just do the single uh, track main line. So again, I'm just going to hit the browse button on the template drop window. And I'm just going to pick our single track ballast again. OK, locate our corridor, accept the template. This one starts at 910 and we're going to hit the Alt key on the keyboard to go all the way to the end. Drop into all of five and hit escape to cancel out of the command. And that's the corridor drops completed for the whole of the track. If we just window in to roughly about station 910, you will see that the second template drop that we generated, the widened section is still at its full distance. Now we don't need to have the widened section here at its full width because we want it to follow the track B center line. So to do this, we're going to use a parametric constraint. So if we go to edits, create parametric constraint, just locate the corridor. And it's going to start at station 815. 
and it's going to end at station 910. And the constraint label is the LO ballast width. So it's the left outside ballast point that we're going to control. So we'll just give that the constraint label. The start value is minus 10.7 meters and the end value is minus 1.7. Hit enter to lock it and accept. And you'll see that the section has now tapered itself in to follow our center line. Let's just have a look at this corridor now through a cross section view. So I'm going to open view number seven. And I'm just going to push this over here and just rearrange these windows so they can sit side by side. And then just go to view. Arrange. And I'm going to go back to corridors. Dynamic sections. Open cross section view. I'm going to locate our corridor. In view number one. And click in view number seven. And if you step along. You can see there is the cross section of our corridor. You can go to the properties and change the vertical exaggeration should you want to. I'm happy with what it is at five. And you will see both in the 3D view and the 2D view this light blue line. And that's tracking where the cross section window is located. And that ends exercise five. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.